over domain 3.3, compare and contrast concepts and strategies to protect data. So we're going to go over the different data types, different data classifications, general data considerations we have to think about, and then different methods to secure our data. Okay, so data types overview. So to understand the various categories of data and their significance and security is very essential for us forming a robust data protection strategy. So what we're saying here is that if we need, we want to create a mandatory access control scheme, if we want to configure data loss prevention, we have to define and categorize our data first. So regulated data, this is data bound by legal and regulatory requirements, needs stringent to pro stringent protection measures to avoid non-compliance. So this is like HIPAA, customer information under the GDPR, which is EU-based. So how do we protect? Well, really, you just got to look into the different frameworks that teach you how to protect HIPAA. There's good ISO standards. The actual GDPR website itself, right, has information. That's how you go protecting this data, just by following the best practices, right, and making sure that you're in compliance. A trade secret. So this is information that provides a competitive edge and is classified as a trade secret and is crucial for a company's market position and also their profitability. So how do we protect our own users from not releasing trade secret information? Well, one, non-disclosure agreements. How do we protect people from coming in and stealing? We need good physical security measures. And we need comprehensive IT security measures that specifically protect that trade secret. So if we have DLP systems, that could be classifying those trade secrets, right? And making sure that our systems stop that data exfiltration. IP. So intellectual property is something that is protected, right? And that encourages innovation. So in the organization, IP could potentially be copyrighted, could be patented, it could be trademarked. And to protect our IP from getting uh, exfiltrated from our enterprise, again, we have just our typical security measures, DLP, doing our network intrusion prevention. But our users, making sure they sign AUPs, NDAs, and non-compete clauses if they're going to be working with their IP, okay? Making sure that we have the proper paperwork in place to protect our own intellectual property. Legal information. This is information related to legal proceedings or contracts. It's highly sensitive and requires confidentiality. So when we're storing legal information in our databases, making sure that we have proper encryption in place, okay? Secure storage with limited access. Financial information. So when it comes to financial information, we're gonna have to comply also with something called the PCI DSS compliance, especially if we're doing credit card, debit card transactions within the Visa, Amex, MasterCard networks, right? Any major credit card uh, provider, really. So protection. Always encryption, strict access control, making sure we have Mac and RBAC as our access control schemes and methods, and also monitoring. Maybe that's deploying some DAM, database activity monitoring, or FIM, file integrity monitoring, that can alert us when potential financial files have been touched by unauthorized users. Okay, different data types, human and non-human readable. So data in formats directly understandable by humans is like text and images or non-human readable as can be encrypted or machine code require different protection strategy methods. So protection methods vary significantly based on the format from encryption for non-human readable data to clear policies and procedures for human readable data. So what we're saying here is that if we're talking ones and zeros, we want to encrypt it. Change that plain text to ciphertext. If we're talking about potential documents left out on our desk, maybe we need some clean desk policies. Maybe we need some burn policies and shredding policies for when we have those documents. If we're talking images that are going to get sent on the enterprise, DLP always if it's protected, or we need watermarks in those images. So we know that, hey, no one can use this in their PowerPoints or in their lessons or to make money off our watermarked images. 
Okay, now let's get into classifying. So it's important that we categorize and classify data based off our risk assessments so that we can uh, measure that data correctly, protect it from exfiltration correctly, handle it and store it correctly in compliance with regulations or maybe we're in secure environments. And also we wanna classify correctly to make sure we have the proper monitoring and maintenance of our data. So sensitive data. This is data whose unauthorized disclosure, altercation, or destruction could cause significant harm is classified as sensitive. So this is uh, like personal identifiable information, trade secrets are common examples of sensitive data. Typically the term sensitive is gonna be for like the commercial side, right guys? You may be used to like unclass, secret, confidential, top secret, which we'll get to. Confidential. So this is data that requires restriction of access to prevent unauthorized disclosure. That's classified as confidential. So we need to implement strict access controls and security training for our authorized personnel to handle confidential data. Public. So this is information that can be disclosed and it doesn't cause any harm. So we're going to have the minimal levels of protection for our public data, right? As far as securing the actual data, this doesn't mean if, oh, well, it doesn't matter. Like we're a public company. That's not all we're saying. We're just saying that internally, there's going to be things that can be made public. Like your marketing teams, you have to be sure that what they're sharing is public information and not trade secrets, not sensitive, okay? So we got to make sure we classify properly. Restricted. So this is data with very high sensitivity that's subject to legal or regulatory restrictions. This is going to be HIPAA, GDPR. Private. So this is going to be personal data that is not meant for public disclosure. This is also going to be like your health records personal emails that maybe belong to that user, belong to the organization. And then we have critical. So this is data essential for the operation of the organization is classified as critical. So critical data requires the highest level of protection with robust redundancy and disaster recovery plans. So this is going to have the highest business impact, okay? Now, since uh, in this comp to you guys, in this section, we're not going to get into the government data classification, right? We're just, this is all kind of commercial. Uh, obviously, you know, in the DOD, in the government, we have secret, top secret, things of that nature. And that's how we classify data. Okay, let's go ahead and do our check on learning. Let me bring up this quiz real quick. Not able to use that direct link. Okay, so domain 3.3, .3, data types and data classifications. Which of the following is the most appropriate measure to protect the confidentiality of trade secrets? A, encrypting the data at rest, that could work, right? B, applying digital watermarks, that could that could help us like monitor and see when people are using it and that really good prevention. Implementing network level firewalls. We're gonna go with C, restricting access through ACLs. So trade secrets are a form of intellectual property. We wanna make sure that it doesn't get released ever. If it's encrypted, there's still a potential to steal data, may, may not be readable, but the most appropriate measure is just restrict access, right? Don't let anyone get access to it that doesn't need access. Question two, in the context of restricted data, which of the following measures is least likely to be effective? So that's gonna be open Wi-Fi networks. So they're inherently insecure, right? Doing all these different measures are different security measures we can do just in general for our defense in depth, but open Wi-Fi networks are something we never wanna do, right? Question three, which of the following best describes the main difference between public and private data. So that's gonna be B, public data is available to everyone while private data has restricted access. Question four, which strategy is most crucial for protecting critical data within an organization? So we're gonna go with D here, all the above. With critical data, we wanna have backups. We wanna have strong password policies. 
and of course, user awareness training. And that's just touching the surface of what we want to do for our critical data. We also want good access control schemes, right? Mandatory, role-based. Question five. Which statement accurately differentiates sensitive data from confidential data? So sensitive data is a subset of confidential data, often requiring additional protective measures. So think of this kind of like a SAP program, right? Maybe you're cleared for like a uh, secret, but there's maybe a special access program that uh, is gonna have additional protective measures. Question six. Which mechanism is least effective in protecting intellectual property rights online? Okay, so pretty much we're saying uh, <laughs> all these may work, but which is the least effective? So we're going to go with CAPTCHAs. So digital rights management software is going to help us protect our IP from leaving the network. Copyright notices can happen, like, depending on where they upload things, right? Like if they steal your IP, upload to YouTube, YouTube can help you. Then non-disclosure agreements can hold someone liable if they did disclose IP. Or CAPTCHAs, that's just kind of stopping like spam, right? That's not very effective. 